be blunt, it's, uh, it's in a bit of a mess. Um, mostly I would say it's irrelevant. It does not attempt to address the way the world really is. It's much more concerned with conforming to an image of science, which as it happens is not a good image of science, and that makes it, leads to people proceeding in a way that's totally irrelevant, mostly irrelevant. Let me take the opportunity to say, the problem stems from the use of methods, but I'm not criticizing the methods, I'm criticizing the use of methods inappropriately. Economists use methods, they choose the methods in an a priori fashion. I mean, to be blunt, they use methods of mathematical modeling. Um, in any other discipline, they have problems, they look at the problems, they design methods to fit the tasks, the world, the context they're dealing with. Economists for the last 60 years have started from the assumption, this is the method, give me the problem. It's as if I said to you, um, I've got a task where you come and help me bring your tools without telling you what tools to take. I mean, first of all, you'd probably say get lost, but if I offered you a few million pounds, you'd say, well, what tools, what's the task, what do I need to bring? Economists don't ask that question. What is the nature of the task? For the last 60 years, they've had the same tool for all, all jobs, all applications, and it's mathematical modeling. And as it happens, uh, these methods don't fit social reality very well. So it's the mismatch. It's the, it's first of all, the major problem is not to actually start from the nature of the context and say, what are the appropriate tools? And secondly, in taking a universal approach, the tool chosen actually isn't very useful at all. Well, that's a long story, but the sort of methods mathematical economists use presuppose a closed system, a world in which correlations, event regularities occur, and these are guaranteed in conditions where economic agents, whatever they are, are conformed to being isolated atoms. They have the same independent, invariable effect, whatever the context. Social reality is just not like that. I mean, rather than being closed, it's open. Rather than agents being fixed, they're in process. And rather than being isolated, social reality is everywhere relational. I'd say they're not. Um, openness is not a good approximation to closure. Transformation is not a good approximation, or fixity is not a good approximation to, to um, transformation. And being independent, isolated, is not a good approximation to relational. They're pretty much the opposite. So uh, they're not a good approximation. And in a context of 60 years of pretty much continuous failure of the discipline, failure of models to explain, predict, to real insight, this failure to even approximate is the explanation of the failings of the discipline, the lack of successes. It could be relevant if where social reality conforms to these underlying preconditions, words of isolated atoms. For example, driving in rush hour traffic, people are pretty much isolated and atomistic. I mean, yes. Demand for heating, electricity and Alaska in the middle of the winter, there's not a lot of choice in it. So, the, but that's the right question. The question is not are these methods in or these methods out? All methods should be on the table, as it were, but start from the problem. What are we looking at? What is the nature of the phenomenon we're dealing with? And if you like, are mathematical methods appropriate in these conditions? It's an empirical question. The mainstream is defined, first of all, by its emphasis on methods, mathematical modeling. That forces it into a particular ontology, whether it knows it or not, world of isolated atoms then it considers those theories or formulations of theories that can be transformed into a world of isolated atoms. So human beings have to be turned into atoms. The obvious assumption to you is that they, they're rational. They don't make mistakes. There's an optimum and they go for it. Heterodoxy 
is something else. It puts more emphasis on being realistic. Um, I do think, underpinning most of the different schools within heterodoxy, are ontological claims that are either sometimes explicitly made or close to the surface. But another difference, even when heterodox economists use mathematical modeling, they're far more pluralistic about it. They're willing to engage with people who don't. They're willing to say it's one method amongst others. So pluralism of method is essential to heterodoxy, I think. Social ontology, per se, is, is the study of the nature of stuff. And it, it's not essential to go into a history of thought. However, it's impossible to avoid ontology. The only question is whether it's explicit or implicit. Even mainstream models have their ontology of a world of isolated atoms. So it's useful to view different strands of history of thought in terms of their ontological presuppositions. And it's noticeable. I mean, if I was teaching a history of thought, I'd certainly point out that if we take, let's say, Marx on capital, he starts with a commodity, but not just a commodity, but the nature of the commodity. And he asks, how do we explain its nature? And he goes into the nature of value, the nature of money, the nature of labor power. Keynes starts his treatise on money with a, a chapter, he calls it a book, a chapter called The Nature of Money. He starts with ontology. Beblin does ontology through and through. His whole definition of neoclassical economics is based on ontology. His call for a turn to an evolutionary economics is based on ontology. Hayek um, started out trying to justify equilibrium economics and went to his notion of spontaneous order. It's all ontology. It's all about the nature of order and social reality. So I would certainly do history of thought ontologically if I were to teach it, but then I think ontology enters everything. I would say Capital is a book on ontology. As I've just said, it starts with a commodity. He says, well, you know, um, what is a commodity? It seems to have a, a usefulness. It's unrelated to its, its price or its exchange value. How do we make sense of this? And that led to the question, well, what is value? And that led to the question of where does value come from? And, what is the nature of the source of value, labor power or whatever. It is ontological through and through. But his broader question is, what is this uh, relational, processual, totality, emotion we call capitalism? So the whole thing is ontological. I mean, the details of his ontological position we can argue over. I'm not claiming, or I don't think it was wholly consistent, but ontology is, is there. He used the word metaphysics, that's his Veblen, but he meant by it pretty much what I mean by ontology. What's missing from modern economics is long-term commitments to projects of understanding specific questions. I mean, it used to be, the, I mean, Marx spent his life studying the nature of capitalism. Hayek spent most of his time studying order. Keynes, Bebel, and Marshall, whoever, they had long-term projects, Schumpeter especially, long-term projects that took them their whole life. Well, an ontological turn, uh, most, first and foremost, most trivially, just means taking account of what we're dealing with. It, it's so obvious it shouldn't need to be said, in my view, but, um, but it's missing. It used not to be missing. Um, Marx, Keynes, Veblen, Marshall, they all started with ontology, whether they used the word or not. Since methods of mathematical modeling became dominant, there's a sense in which we don't need ontology because ontology enables us to work out what are the correct methods, but in economics, the correct methods, or the methods, come first. And so ontology disappears. So if we have a turn to ontology, we start asking the, the question, what are we dealing with? Most generally, what is the nature of social reality? What are, how do social phenomena exist? And then specific questions, what is the nature of what we're dealing with? Money, the corporation, technology, gender, care, etc. And then, of course, we fashion methods as we go along, J just as they do in the non-social sciences. Um, to take an example, 
uh, the best theory of particle physics had no place for mass, or mass was zero, and they needed an explanation. Higgs came up with his Higgs boson particle or field uh, 50 years, 60 years ago. And, and according to the nature of the theory, they need a method to assess it. That meant a building or having a particle accelerator, such as at CERN. So the method follows the theory. In economics, the theory follows the method. I do believe, as it happens, um, most heterodox groups can be seen as focusing on issues that fairly clearly reflect ontological presuppositions. Um, the institutionists following Veblen, very interested in evolutionary change um, and things that bring stability within change. So a focus on evolutionary economics and institutions is fundamental to them, basically ontological. Post-Keynesians are very interested in uncertainty, where well, the uncertainty basically comes from the openness. So it's an ontological presupposition, or rather it conditions their focus, openness. Feminists are especially interested, I believe, in relationships, relations of care, oppression, exploitation, rather. So it's kind of relational. So relationality, openness, uh, process, in the case of Marxist totalities, the ontological presuppositions, presuppositions are there. So I see the heterodox traditions as a division of labor looking at the same basic social reality. They accept the common nature, they agree more or less on the nature of social reality and the divisions of labor within it. But in truth, to take your question slightly further, I don't think there's a non-arbitrary basis for having a separate discipline of economics anyway. Because once you look at the nature of social reality, it's the same, it's the same broad answer whether the stuff we're dealing with is focused upon within sociology, politics, anthropology, whatever. We're all divisions of labour. So just as we have divisions of labour within economics, so I think economics is just a d division of labour in the broader social science with its, its own subject being about material conditions of well-being or whatever. I did a, a first degree in mathematics. I got involved in student politics. Um, I changed and went to the LSE because uh, I'd become interested in economics. But what I found was people teaching me ISLM codes, Robinson Crusoe, mathemat excuses to do mathematical modeling. And once I'd learnt the jargon, I looked at the exam paper and I realised I could answer the questions already. So I didn't really pay much attention to the course. Um, instead, a year later or whenever, I went to Cambridge and took up a PhD, more or less by accident. And in those days, um, that was, you didn't need much education in economics to do that, sadly. So I did a PhD and within a year or so, they gave me a job. So I haven't really had economics teaching very much along the way. The first day in my economics lectures that I did go to, this is a master's at the LSC. I can remember listening to all sorts of theories and assumptions being set out, the names of different economists. And then I put my hand up and said, OK, you've told us about the model of X and the model of Y and the model of Z, but what really causes some phenomenon. And uh, the, the lecturer just looked stunned as if to say, you know, how impolite can you be? We, you don't ask that question. And the embarrassed looks around the room. And a friend of mine who was on the same course, Mary Farmer, who unfortunately died far too young, she was a sociologist. She said to me, economists don't care about the real world, they only look at models. And she was on the course to study economists for her PhD in sociology. She called them the economics tribe. So it started at that moment. I thought, well, why? Why aren't economists interested in the real world? Why are they playing with these models, which to me seemed right from the outset irrelevant? So that's when I started doing ontology. I said to people, um, yeah, these models, why do you use them? They're clearly unrealistic. They're clearly not very relevant. They're not going to help us understand. And the question came back is, so what is relevant? Yeah. What is social reality really like then? So that's when it started.
my intuition's a bit like someone saying, here's a feather of a hammer, go and cut the grass with it. I just found it wasn't appropriate. But still, you know, here's a whole economics profession building these models, and there must be something to it, and am I being really naive here? And you know, the question of what is science, what is method, how do we deal with these things, it was all, it was all new to me. I, I'd, um, I come from a pretty poor background. I, 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 mathematics got me to university. I hadn't studied these issues. I was aware that I was probably ignorant of uh, so much. Well, I was ignorant of so much. So yes, I went and read lots in the philosophy of science. I followed my own roots. Modern day philosophy of science, Aristotle, all sorts of people. But you're right, it was more reading them and picking out the bits that bore on the questions I had. I didn't read them for the sake of reading them. I read them because I had a, my own project and I wanted to find answers. What I don't think is what's happening. That is, a few experts are currently writing alternative textbooks with slightly different models, slightly simpler models, and using them to teach lectures. Um, the whole system, the whole of econ academic economics needs to change, um, including obviously what is taught. The problem just is this emphasis on mathematical modelling. Um, I don't like many other heterodox economists think it's um, political ideology, I think it's a methodological ideology, it's a form of blinkering, but I think once the blinkers are removed, everyone will be a better place to contribute to teaching. I, I guess we, we, we always must start from here. If it were to happen, or somewhere early on, the current mainstream approaches would probably become options, because that's all that the current group of academics can teach, but it would have to evolve, and evolve according to the, the way in which research evolves and our understanding of the world evolves. So it would become a project to discipline in process that adapts to current understandings, topics considered most important, the skills of those present in any department and student interests, be driven by all these things. But one thing I think it's important to recognise is that ontology is not something mysterious. It's not something um, that only goes on in philosophy departments. In fact, it doesn't even happen there very much. We all do it. Uh, you're walking down the street, you act differently according to whether the thing in front of you is a lamppost, a person, a, an elephant or whatever. You, you just react differently. It's not about a turn to something that's mystical or for the experts, it's just making explicit what we do implicitly all the time. If you've got a problem in the house or in the garden or whatever, you choose tools appropriately. You don't just take the nearest tool or the tool you like best and go and try and use it for everything. We do ontology all the time. It's really just about being explicit, systematic, sustained in what, what, what's always there. But I think it would have radical revolutionary consequences. It means, I think, that, that most of the uh, contributions of modern economics are seen immediately to be irrelevant. The methods of mathematical modelling just are not a tool for much social analysis. So it's not a, a claim without consequence, but it's not such a revolutionary act to start taking notice of the nature of stuff we deal with. I think that's important. And I've already stressed it, but I'll stress it again because more chance you won't edit it out. This is not an anti-mathematics stand. It's not an anti-science stand. In fact, I think it's a pro-mathematics and a pro-science stand. It's an anti-mismatch stand. Mismatch. An anti-using the wrong tool for the wrong task, or it's pro 
making sure that whatever your task, you've got the right tools for it. If it turns out to be maths, fine, but typically it won't be in the social realm. Thank you.